In this video, we're gonna take a look at all of the various enhancements that have been made to Impact XT. And as you just saw, we now have the ability to embed Impact within the edit window. And then you also have a variety of different ways to view it when you're using the edit window. So we'll begin with that and we will go ahead and close out our Impact XT. Let's come down to edit and I'll just click on that to open it up. Now, in order to access the view of the embedded impact in our editor, we can click on this button here and we can see that we are presented with a view that has our various pads, the 16 pads, as well as the parameters for whichever pad is selected. Now, changing what we're seeing here is actually a bit confusing to me because I kind of never know what I'm going to get, but you can change in several different ways. So if we come to the edge here and pull this in, and let's also come to the top of our editor and pull this down. Okay, now we can see that that view changes. And if you take notice in this top right hand corner, as I pull this down, we have these two buttons that pop up. So here we can switch between viewing the parameters for whichever sound we have selected. And so here, if I click on this, we can switch to see the pads. And again, this one, we can view the parameters for the currently active pad. Now, once I go ahead and drag this up to increase the view for our editor, you'll notice that these pads or these options are gonna go away. And then if I come to this edge and expand out, we can continue on and there's no change there. So just be aware that you're gonna have to get used to uh, resizing and figuring out what you're gonna get when you make these adjustments. What I'd actually like to see is three different buttons here. One to just view the parameters, one to just view the pads, and then one that's gonna show both, like this view here. And no matter how much we resize this, it's gonna remain on whatever we choose to select instead of kind of, I know it's not randomly changing, you can figure out the pattern, but I feel like this is a little bit confusing uh, how this functions. So, but overall, I think this is an incredibly cool feature because Sometimes I'll just use an impact to create an entire song. So having the ability to work with the impact in the editor, as well as seeing my arrangement up above in the arrange view is very excellent for me. So I love this new feature. Now next we're gonna hop over to another song here and we're gonna take a look at adding audio files or samples directly to the edit window. So I'm going to double click here for our impact. Let's actually set this back to the default. Close that out. I'll double click to add a MIDI part. Let's double click on that. We now have the edit window. Let's open up our browser. And so over here we can see our pitches and I want to come down to, I'd like to go to C1. And the reason for that being is that if we come back to our impact again, we can see that the first pad starts on C1. So when we add these samples, they're gonna be added chromatically or sequentially. So we're gonna start off on C1 because that's where our first pad begins. So I'm gonna come over to this kick here and just drag this to C1, drop that. We can see all of the other pitches go away. And if I open up the impact, we can see that this has been added to C1 as expected. Now, if we come up to another sample here, let's drag that in and place it below our kick. Now you can see that this is added to C sharp one. And again, if we come to our instrument, that's added chromatically, as I mentioned. And then we'll add a snare, place that below our rattle. Now you can see that that's on D1. We'll again come to our instrument. Okay, so these are added like so. Let's close out our impact and I'm going to right click on our MIDI part and let's come to instrument parts and we're going to convert this to a pattern because I just wanted to briefly mention that we also have the ability to drag these into the pattern editor as well. So D sharp one, our bubble perk. If we open up our impact, then we can see that that's added there. 
Now, the next feature that we're going to take a look at is copying, copying parameters between the different pads here. So let's come to the snare and we will take the pitch down on this pretty dramatically. Let's also activate the filter and take that down a bit. Okay, so we've adjust, adjusted the pitch and the filter. And if we come to our bubble perk, we can see the pitch and filter are at their default settings. But what we can do is hold Control and Alt. And we see have the, we have the hand that appears. And I'm going to click, hold, and drag this to the bubble perk. And now we can see that the pitch and filter have then taken on the settings for our snare. Let's come up to the top and we'll go ahead and change this back to the default to clear out those samples. Let's also delete our MIDI part in the arrange view. We'll close out the edit. Let's open up the browse and we'll switch over to the loops tab here. So let's double click to play this back. Now in previous versions, we've had the ability to drag these and have them automatically drag a loop and have it automatically sliced within impact. But now within version seven, it's going to create a MIDI part along with sli slicing this loop to the pads. So I'm going to grab our loop here and hold shift. Let's come here and we can see slice and spread across multiple pads. I'll go ahead and release that. Okay. So that's not new behavior, but if we move this out of the way, let's close out our browser browser as well. We can see we now have a MIDI part and this is going to trigger our sliced samples. Let's actually move this to within our loop region and we will play this back. So we can see this moving up sequentially. And our loop has then been sliced up. Now, something to consider is that now we can hear a little bit of a click on this one at the beginning here. Just know that you can adjust the start and end markers for these slices that have been created automatically. So if I come to the start here, let's drag that just a little bit. Okay, so let's clean that up. So we've got another one here. We can come to the start. And this should automatically snap to a zero crossing to help you get rid of that click or pop. Uh, if you do find those within your slices. Now using the start and end markers is not only useful for cleaning things up, but if we click, hold and drag in the window here, we can also determine what portion of our loop is gonna be played back. So if we'd like to include all of this here, you can set that up with your start and end markers. You can, if you're working with a vocal sample or an instrument sample or a song, you can really hone in on the area that you want to play back with the pad by using the start and end markers. Now we can also close out our impact. Let's double click on our MIDI part and we can come here and select a note and use our up and down arrows to change how this plays back. Okay, so that doesn't sound too great, but you get the idea and you can experiment with that. And also keep in mind that if we come back to our instrument by clicking here, our impact, we can determine the length of playback for our samples using the AD, AHD controls here or ADSR controls. Uh, if we have normal selected right now, it's on one shot. So that should work for you. But we can also come to normal if we'd like to have more control over how our slice is played back using these controls here. Now let's go ahead and load a new kit into our impact. We'll close out the editor. And then here I have a sample one. Let's pin the impact so that remains open when we open up our sample one. I'll click here and I'll go ahead and pin this as well. So we now have the option to copy a sample from our impact directly to sample one. And we can do that by holding control. So here with our snare boom, I'm going to hold control. We see the hand pop up and I can click hold and drag that to our sample one. And that's been added like so. If I come over to our clap and hold control, let's first select it. We then have the hand. I'll go ahead and click hold. I'll add that. 
And now we both have our snare and clap stacked for triggering. So if you ever have a situation where you'd like to have multiple samples copied from your impact and triggered at once, you can definitely do that within sample one. Now the final feature that we're gonna take a look at is the new instrument bus feature. So we've got our kit loaded and you can see that this pad is going out on six, I believe this is, this is three. So if I click on this, you can see where it's designated the particular channel. And if we come to the mix console, normally we would see a lot of channels going on here for impact, but we now have this new instrument bus and there's a folder down at the bottom here. So once I click on this folder, then that's gonna expand out to show all of our channels here. And let's actually right click on our sample one, remove track and instrument, just to make this very clear. So again, looking at our pads, we can see that this is going out on stereo one, this is stereo six, this is two, and so on. And so that's why we end up with multiple channels. When I trigger the snare, we can see that that's coming out on two, as well as our clap, our hat, is coming out on three. And so before version seven, we didn't have this bus here, which contains, or all of these are routed to. These would go directly to our main unless we specifically set up our own bus. So this is gonna be incredibly useful if you're working on a song that has a high track count with a lot of channels in your console. And if you're not working on your drums, mixing the drums, then you can simply click on the folder to collapse those and you're only seeing the bus for your impact. And then making use of this fader is going to adjust the levels for all channels within your impact relatively. Okay, so this has been a look at the new features for Impact XT. I hope this has been useful. And I just want to mention that I do offer one-on-one -on -one training via Zoom. So if you're struggling with getting started with Studio One or you're having technical issues, definitely check out the information in the description of this video or the pinned comment below. And if you would like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, go ahead and reach out. And otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.